So let's go back to the software for a minute and let's talk about warranty claims. Under warranty claims, we don't have the nodes, okay? We don't list the suppliers. You would actually search for the specific v vendor from the list, okay? Remember, you, this is a new feature. You guys can type in whoever you want to look for. So if I wanted to look for CarQuest, then here they pop up on the list. I can search by a status. A status would mean not posted, which means I haven't received the credit invoice, or posted, meaning I have received the credit invoice, and that claim has been processed and moved into the payable account, but I can still get to it. And you can also search by claim number. So use any one or all of these to locate and what I like to do, again, since I have minimal activity, it may be different for you guys. I'm just going to select all. I'm going to select search. And here are my claims. Remembering that the claims have been sent to the supplier. So the supplier is in possession. And we are now sitting back waiting for the supplier to issue the actual credit. On your, on your warranty claims, okay, there's several options you have. If you're going to use the all feature, you have the ability to sort any of this information by any of the column headers. So if I wanted, and, and my dates are, are very close together, but if I wanted to sort by date, ascending or descending, if I want to sort by supplier, I can sort by supplier. Okay, I also have the ability to take the vendor column, okay, drag that up, and now, if I had a lot of claims in here, I'm now organizing all those claims by supplier. So I just want you to think, you will probably have more activity than I will. So drag your vendor up. Now you'll see I have one claim for O'Reilly, one claim for CarQuest. To view the details, simply click on the plus sign, and there are the details of those claims. Here's the one we processed just a few seconds ago. So what we might want to do with this is um, just open it up and, and take a quick look at it. To do that, we can either use the edit action from the main ribbon. We can also use a right click option from the line item itself. Let's just go back to the presentation for a second. Warranty claims are also organized by the supplier. Use the search parameters to search for a warranty claim. You can search by vendor, supplier. You can search on all suppliers. You can search on the status. You can search on a claim number. Use the column headers to organize. And remember, you can drag that column up to group those, those items by supplier. Select a warranty claim and select edit from the action menu group or from a right click. Okay. And from the warranty claim menu, use the main ribbon options to process or edit the warranty claims. Let's look at some of the menu options within the warranty claim. So if I take my CarQuest warranty that we just processed a minute ago, I'm going to go into edit. When I get the claim up on my screen, you can see that's exactly what I'm looking at. Here are the details or individual items that were processed with that claim. Some of the menu options, again, going backwards, okay, are going to be the ability to do an edit, remove, or view invoice. You might wonder why these menu options are grayed out. It's because I have to select an item to edit, remove, or view. So you guys have all seen how the view invoice works. It opens up the customer's invoice. I have, again, the ability to do an edit on that item, which means, again, if the supplier is not going to process, if it's the wrong supplier, if it's the wrong claim number, whatever the case would be, I have the ability to move that item around. There will be mistakes, so just keep in mind, we have the ability for you guys to make changes to those things as you go forward. Let me just mention to you that remove. I think maybe you've noticed in this uh, session that you don't see delete anywhere in the warranty section. Once you've processed that item as a warranty, it is a warranty. So remove is not going to delete. What remove would do is if I took this item okay, and I said remove that item, what that's going to do is it's going to move it 
from the warranty claims back to pending claims. We do not delete warranty items. In the event that your, your supplier is not going to give you a warranty, then of course what you would do on that warranty item okay, is you would go in and do an edit and most likely make a change okay, to the pricing. So if your supplier is not going to give you a credit, you've submitted a credit of $55.99. If your supplier says no, then essentially you're going to zero that out and make the adjustment here. You also have the ability to make adjustments from the warranty claim ribbon. Keep in mind, and this is getting a little detailed, but keep in mind that if I adjust the warranty claim, okay, it's going to go to the general ledger as a warranty claim adjustment. If I adjust the individual line item in a labor scenario, there is a labor warranty entry in the general ledger. It will adjust the labor warranty line. If I adjust the material line, it's going to adjust the material warranties. But it works a little bit different, okay? Keep in mind, this. if I adjusted this, all it's going to do is change the face value of $55.99 to whatever I adjust it. If I use the adjustment on top, that is going to post to my general ledger under general warranty claims. So keep in mind, you have two options on how you want to do that. You also have the ability to process a tax adjustment, which would be simply for taxes. Again, I train in the U.S. and Canada, so you guys are going to see a whole bunch of stuff in here. But if I needed to make a tax adjustment, if there was a small rounding error, then select that tax and make the adjustment. If you'll watch over here under the taxation, you're going to see that adjustment take place. So there will most likely be the need to make these types of adjustments going forward because often what you submit to the supplier may not be what you get from the supplier. So remember your adjustments. You can adjust the individual line item. You can do a general adjustment to this claim if you like. So there's a couple of different ways that we can process those. One of the main things that's going to happen when you get your credit back from your supplier, most likely it's going to have a different claim number. One will be a claim number, or as I said earlier, the date and whoever you gave the parts to. When you get the credit back from the supplier, it's going to be a credit invoice. So you would select claim number and make the edit to match the paper copy of your supplier's credit. Let's do this. I'm just going to enter today's date as the claim number. Of course, you would enter the paper copy number. And if you'll watch right up here under the claim number, that's going to go ahead and make that change. This is important for the people that do the reconciliations on the payables and receivables and all those different things where your warranty claims would go. At this point, you have the ability to save. If you say, I need to stop, got to go to lunch, got to answer a phone call, I can save it and come back to it. Or if you're ready to process it, you can go ahead and post the claim. It's important to understand that you have options on how the credit has come back to you. Usually, when you buy products on account with a supplier, the supplier will post the credit back to your payable account. So in your payable account, you will see all your purchase invoices and you would see all your credits. That makes it easy to reconcile this payable account when you get your statement. There will be times when you don't have an account with a supplier and your supplier bills your credit card. So you used your credit card to buy okay, these, these brake pads or whatever I'm processing. So often if that's the case, your supplier is going to process a credit against your credit card and that will go into your credit card account. Okay? There could be a direct type scenario, an, an electronic funds transfer that takes place. So go right to the bank account, and that will make an entry into the bank account, just like it would make an entry if they credited your credit card. Sometimes for labor claims, you'll receive a check. Often suppliers do that, not always, but they will give you a credit against your purchase to be posted to payable accounts on the brake pad set, but they will issue a check on the labor claim. 
So just keep in mind that you have the ability to separate these. And not very often, but it could happen that um, your supplier will send cash back with the driver. So pay attention to these entries. I'm going to post this one to accounts payable because that's how I work with CarQuest. And I'll go ahead and process that claim. So that claim now is listed under a status as posted, identifies the date, okay, the created date, the date it was processed, and if I do a reset on this and go back to warranty claims and select all, you're going to see that CarQuest claim is gone. That CarQuest claim has now been moved into my payable accounts. So we select payables. Let's bring up CarQuest. Okay, and under CarQuest, okay, the warranty claim we just processed is right here. So understand how you make these steps identifies how all this information moves forward. And if you take your time to follow and read the screens, usually you're going to get it done right. Okay. So that's a pretty simple process. Let's just go back to the presentation. Let's talk a little bit. Line item menu group gives you the ability to edit the individual line item. Removing the item will move it from warranty claims back to pending claims, and you have the ability always to view the invoice for the customer that the warranty was processed. Warranty claim menu group gives you the ability to edit the claim number, make a general adjustment, or make a tax adjustment for you guys that um, or bill taxes. Action menu group allows you to print. PDF or email, save any changes that you've made, and of course, post the item. Adjustments to the line item credit can be made. So click on the dollar value under the claim amount column and edit as needed. So that's going to be the difference between making this adjustment up here, which is a general adjustment, or making an adjustment to a material or a labor line. And remember, posted warranty claims are moved into the supplier's payable account so that you're going to recognize that when you do your reconciliation. 